Hi everybody. Now I want to do a calculation um, that looks at the, um, the question, uh, suppose I go and get a COVID test and it's positive. What does that say about the chance of my actually having the virus? And this is a calculation which will use the ideas of conditional probability. And it's a very typical calculation that um, arises whenever you have a test which, you, which is unreliable, even uh, in the sense that there's at least some chance that um, it will produce a, a positive result when, in fact, it should be negative or vice versa. And uh, as we'll see, um, this, uh, the accuracy of the test in this situation depends on how rare the condition that you're testing for is, as well as uh, the sort of properties of the test itself. So um, here we go. So here's the situation. Um, the question is, suppose I get a positive test for COVID. What's the chance that I'm sick? In other words, that I have the virus. Now, in an ideal world, it would be 100%. But unfortunately, that's not the case because the tests are subject to different kinds of errors. So in order to put this into the context of conditional probability, let's start with our sample space. Our sample space is the population as a whole. It could be maybe the population in a city or the population in your neighborhood, um, but it's a group of people. And we're interested in two different uh, kinds of events. The first event is a person could be sick or well. So, um, and the other uh, category of event is that the person could get a positive or a negative COVID test. So the, uh, the events that we're interested in are sick versus well. and positive versus negative. And the population is divided up into four categories of people. The people who have positive tests and are sick, the people who have positive tests and are uh, have negative tests and are sick, the people who are healthy and have positive tests, and the people who are healthy and have negative tests. And you would call this a true positive you would call this a false negative. You would call this a false positive. And this would be a true negative. And in terms of conditional probability, what we want to know is, what is the chance that I'm sick given that my test is positive? And by the definition of conditional probability, that's the probability that I'm in the group of people who are both sick and have a positive test, but I want to know, I already know that my test is positive, so I want the probability that among those who have positive tests, um, am I in the sick group or am I in the well group? Now, uh, here's some background information that we can get uh, from looking at uh, some CDC reports. This is old information, so it may, may have been improved or be different now. But the CDC told me that the probability of a positive test, given that you are healthy, in other words, the chance that the PCR test will find virus when none is present, is low. It's 0.005. And the probability that the test will fail to detect a virus when the virus is present is much higher, it's 0.25. So just to fill out this table, the probability that you get a positive test given that you're sick must be 0.75 because among the sick people, the tests are all either positive or negative, so those probabilities have to add up to one. And similarly, the probability of getting a negative test uh, given that you're well is 0.995. Now, to, um, to compute the probability, the conditional probability up above, uh, we're going to use um, Bayes' theorem. 
And Bayes' theorem says that the probability that you're sick given a positive test is the probability of a positive test given that you're sick times the probability that you're sick divided by the probability that you get a positive test. And this number here, we know from the CDC. We have to think a little bit about what the others are. So first of all, let's look at the probability P of S. This is the chance that you're sick. It's the incidence of the disease in the population as a whole. It's the probability that a randomly chosen person is sick. We don't know that, and I want to carry that as a parameter, so I'm going to call that P. Now, what about the probability that you're positive? Well, the probability that you're positive is equal to the probability that you're sick and positive plus the probability that you're healthy and positive. And using the definition of conditional probability, that's the probability that you're positive given that you're sick times the probability that you're sick plus the probability that you're positive given that you're well times the probability that you're well. These numbers we know. The probability that you're positive given that you're sick is 0.75. The probability that you're sick is P. The probability that you're positive given that you're well is 0 0.005. And the probability that you're well is 1 minus the probability that you're sick because the population is made up of sick people and well people. Uh, and so the chance that you're uh, sick plus the chance that you're well has to add up to 1. So uh, the probability that you're well is 1 minus P. And if you regroup that a little bit, you find that it's 0.005 plus 0.745p. So putting these together, the probability that you're interested in is, remember the probability that uh, this positive, probability that you're positive given that you're sick is 0.75 times p over 0.005 plus 0.745p. And if I multiply top and bottom by 1,000, I get 750p over 5 plus 745p. So the, the takeaway from this so far is that this probability of that I'm sick given that the, I got a positive result depends on the incidence of the disease in the population. So what can we say about this function? Well, in the, uh, in the notes for the course, there's a nice plot of this uh, function. It's right here. It's figure two in the probability notes. So let me, um, let me extract that from the notes and stick it into our little uh, discussion here and look at it more closely. So this is a graph of the um, conditional probability that we're interested in versus the incidence of the disease in the population. And if you look at it, you'll notice that if the population incidence is low, if P of S is low, like say only 1%, then the chance that you're sick, given that you have a positive test, is only about 60%. And it's only as the disease becomes more common that the chance that you're sick given a positive test result gets closer to where you'd like it to be, 90, 95%. And this is a very common phenomenon when you're testing for a rare condition. Because even if your test is good in the sense that it tends to give the correct result, if you're testing for a rare condition, there are many, many more people who do not have the condition. And therefore, the false positives, even though there's a low false positive rate, it's applied to a very large number of people. So you do get a significant number of people who are going to have a positive test, even though they don't have the condition. And that's going to reduce the chance that if you get a positive test, that you can rely on it to say that you really do have the condition. So um, this is a uh, has public health implications. And um, we will uh, leave you there to think about it some more.